Right, so I'm in project settings, I'm in color management, and this thing here says timeline color space. What on earth is that? I'm gonna explain in this episode exactly what it is, how it works, and how to set it up correctly. So stick with me to the end, because all the steps in here are important if you wanna use the timeline color space correctly. So we're in project settings, I'm in regular uncolor managed, so I'm in DaVinci YGB, non-color managed workflow. So let's switch it in to color management and take a look at this timeline color space. So I'm gonna first switch in. If you're unsure what I'm even doing here, I have done an episode already on a Beginner's Guide to Color Management, so it'd be worth watching that. But we're in Standard Dynamic Range, Automatic Color Management. And if I press Save, all the footage here, this is red footage, all comes into looking less flat. It's now got a Rec. 709 profile on it, and it's looking good because this is red footage. So the DaVinci Resolve recognizes that it's red because it's raw, so it applies the correct parameters to it. This file, however, is still looking flat because it's not a raw file, it's XAVC intra. So Resolve doesn't actually know what it is until I tell it so in the input color space. All right, so I'm gonna do that in a moment. But first, let's switch over to here and let's have a look what's going on. So I'm gonna switch off automatic color management and that will reveal all the settings that are in here. So going to custom, and now we can see all this extra information that's going on behind the scenes. So in a color managed environment, you've got three important areas to look at. You've got your input color space, you've got your timeline color space, which is what we're focusing on, and we've got our output color space. And these are all set to Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4 at the moment. Now my output, well the, the thing that I'm monitoring on, is Gamma 2.4, so that's, that's what I want as my deliverable. However, the input color space and the timeline color space are working underneath that. So that information can be larger than Rec. 709 if we want it to be. So our input color space here in this case is red. Because it's raw, it would overwrite the input color space setting here. This setting is allowing a default input color space to anything that's not been identified. So the first thing I'm gonna do is press save. I'm gonna identify this clip as Sony S-Log3, which is what it is. So I'm going to go to my input color space, down to here. So we're basically getting everything in its correct input color space first. And the reason for this is because of this. This is straight out of the manual. I'm just going to close these down now because we don't actually need these. Switch my clips off. And what we've got is our input color space here. Okay, so this is our starting point. We've got our, Then that goes to our timeline color space. So the timeline color space is all the tools down here are being processed in a certain color space. Now that can be different from our output color space and it can be different from our input color space. So why do we wanna do that? Well, I'm, I'm gonna show you that. The other thing to bear in mind that is important is your input color space will always correctly send to the timeline color space without any clipping or losing any information at all. Obviously, if your image is already clipped, then that's happened, but no extra clipping can occur from the input to the timeline. Now, when it goes from its timeline color space to our output color space, that might be smaller, clipping can then occur. So you need to be careful of that, but we're monitoring all the time our output color space. So everything else is happening under the hood. Right, so where are we going with this? I'm trying to get it so our timeline color space can be larger than it currently is, which allows us to work in a larger color space. So let me demonstrate that. I'm gonna get rid of that. So we've got our guy here, okay, and let's just check again. So our timeline color space is currently Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4. Now by default, that's often seen. So I'm just gonna change that to be Rec. 709 Scene. And you'll also notice down here, there's a checkbox that says Use Color Space Aware Grading Tools. Now that's on by default. And what that's referring to is that some of the tools are color space aware when you're in a color managed environment. So that's namely the HDR tool, the color warper, the Kia, and the curves. Now when you're in non-color managed, only the, uh, the HDR tool and the color warper, I think, are color managed, but the curves become non-color managed. I'm gonna show you that as well. This will all make sense in a moment. Right, so I'm gonna press save. Okay, and there we go. Now, if I just go in our regular tools here, let's just push up some gain here. We're clipping a little bit now already, but these tools are not color space aware. These are, regu these, these are designed to work in Rec. 709 color space. So the regular primary wheels that you're used to and that you've used all the time and your offset is a Rec. 709 color space function. So let me show you that. If I change my timeline color space to something larger, let's take DaVinci Wide Gamut for example, and press save. It's changed a little bit, but nothing drastic, nothing like you're gonna see in a moment. So I'm gonna reset that. 
So I'm going to reset that there. I'm also going to put that back to Rec 709, sorry, the timeline color space, back to Rec 709 Gamma 2.4. I hope you're sticking with this. This is quite a hard one to actually explain. So I'm trying my best for you here. Right, so I'm going to press save on that. And just before I move on to showing you with the color space aware tool, I'm just going to remind you of this that you've probably seen many, many times before, but this is the classic CIE graph. Rec 709, which is where we're currently set to in our output and also our timeline, is a smaller color space within there, okay? Now there are larger color spaces available. So this blue one, for example, is ARRI. Okay, so this is ARRI wide gamut. An even larger color space than that is the black line on the edge, which is actually Da Vinci wide gamut. So you've also got red, you've got aces, there's, there's many, many different color sciences, but Rec 709 is probably one of the smallest ones that's in there. So what we want to do is get our timeline, which is basically means, so you take our input, goes to the timeline, that's our working tools. It's all the, all the tools that we use down here in the color page are effectively being processed in the timeline color space, which is then being funneled to our output color space. So if we could have a larger color space in our timeline, surely that would be beneficial. So let's have a look. I'm gonna switch that off. There's our guy, everything's looking really nice in here. And what I'm gonna do is use the curves because these are now color space aware because that, check, that checkbox is on. So just to remind you, we are in a timeline color space of Rec 709 Gamma 2.4. And what I'm gonna do is just push the highlights up and up and up. And you see what happens is we're clipping, okay? Because we, we've reached the edge of the color space. Rec 709 is kicking in and we've reached the limits. So our timeline working space, Rec 709, is giving us a bit more of a restricted workflow. So what I'm gonna do is leave that set. I'm gonna click down here. I'm gonna change my timeline color space only to be something larger. Now, what am I gonna set it to? Ideally, you want it to match what your footage is. So if you're working all in Sony S-Log, I would change my timeline color space to be Sony S-Log. If I'm working in ARRI, I would change my timeline color space to be ARRI Log C. I would try and make it match. However, often you are working with mixed formats and you might even be working with some non-log footage as well. So we can use an intermediate for that. And what a good one to use is the DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate setting. So the timeline color space is now set to DaVinci Wide Gamut. You could set it to ARRI Alexa, it doesn't matter. The mapping is automatically done from the input, i.e. S-Log3, would go to ARRI, would go to Rec. 9 Gamma 2.4. You can set it to whatever you want, but the DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate is a really good one to use, especially if you're not quite sure which one to go for. So watch the sky now when I press save. So that's gonna, and there, everything's come back because we're in a larger working timeline color space. So we're not hitting the edges quite so quick now. We've still got a little bit of clipping going on, so we can ease that back. And remember, it's non-destructive going from input to transform. So we could always just add another node if we need to, and we can pull that back down. And there's all our information. We could go to our HDR tool and just work on the light area, for example. And we're working in a much larger color space, but we're monitoring in Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4, because that's our output. So let's have a look at that again, just to show you our output color space, Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4. So now you get the idea of what the timeline color space is. Let's have a look at how that works with CSTs. So what I'm gonna do is come off this and go to a non-color managed environment. Timeline color space, Rec. 709. Output color space, same as timeline. Now I don't want my output color space to be the same as my timeline. I want it to be Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4. So let's set that up properly and press save. Right, I'm gonna get rid of these. And in fact, what I'm gonna do is apply my color space transform. So you've seen me work like this before. I've just done a very basic node tree here. This is nothing like how I normally work, but you've got, I've got two clean nodes, nothing on them at all. And here, why this has gone from log to looking more like we would expect it to is because I've applied a color space transform and I've preset this already. So it's, I've set my input color space, Sony S Gamut 3 Cine. My input gamma is S log three, and my output color space, Rec. 709, output gamma, gamma 2.4, all right? That is how we're getting to this. So I'm gonna come beneath this. I always grade underneath my CST, so the CST is at the end. You can grade underneath that, or it's near the end. And to check my timeline color space, let's click on here, Rec. 709, scene, right. So I'm gonna use the HDR tools because the curves are now not color space aware because I'm in a non-color managed workflow. 
So let's bring up my exposure. Let's just bring down that a little bit and let's just push it. I'm gonna push it a bit hard. So there you see that's all getting very overexposed and let's change our timeline color space. Remember, don't do this during a project. You need to do this at the beginning of your project. I'm just showing you here the differences. Let's change that to be DaVinci Wide Gamut, Intermediate, I press Save, and there we go. We've got all that detail back because we're in a larger color space. So I hope that's kind of demystified what the timeline color space is doing and the difference between timeline and output. You can have them the same. If you're working in Rec. 79 Gamma 2.4, you are kind of restricting yourself a little bit by having that timeline color space set to a smaller color space, but it works perfectly well. And especially if you're used to just using these primary tools, they're not gonna behave any different anyway because they're not actually color space aware. I hope that makes sense. Look after yourselves, hit the subscription if you've enjoyed this. Um, this one was quite a hard one to prepare, so I would really appreciate it, but I hope I've demystified it. Look after yourselves, and I'll see you in the next episode. Hi, Lucy. You, you're going to see Minions? Okay. Yeah, I'm just recording. I'll, I'll put some money on your card. All right. All right, yeah, love you. Bye.